stem also perfect in every part of our life. Yes, science is everywhere in the world around us. And technology is continuously expanding into every aspect of our life. Engineering is the basic design of road and bridge, but also tackles the challenge of changing global weather and environmentally friendly change to our home. Our world also depends on STEM. The economy, our general well-being is all backed by science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. You might be wondering that if STEM is so important, so necessary, and why do we have to keep talking about that? Education has a moral imperative to prepare learners for an increasingly globalized world in which the technology is dramatically altering the nature of work and daily life. In this complex environment, connecting knowledge and skills across the discipline areas is vital to thrive in this world where they must navigate their future career paths Young people will need to be equipped with capabilities. Inventiveness and creativity can pair with STEM and lead to new ideas and new innovations. Without inventiveness and creativity, in recent developments of artificial intelligence or digital learning would not be possible. These technologies were created by people who learn that if human mind can conceive it, so human mind can achieve it. No wonder they had a great K-12 STEM education teacher. Advantages or importance of STEM education includes building resilience. Now, during STEM education activities, students learn in a safe environment that allows them to fall and try again. STEM education stresses the value of failure as a learning exercise, which will enable students to embrace mistakes as part of the learning process. This allows students to build confidence and resilience, which enable them to keep going. After all, failure is a part of process that ultimately leads to success. Secondly, it encourages experimentation. Without a little risk-taking and experimentation, many of the technological advancements that have occurred in the last couple of decades would not have been possible. Many of these innovations were created by people who were told that their ideas wouldn't work and their response was, let's try it and see. This type of attitude can be encouraged with STEM learning. Last but not least, it encourages teamwork. STEM education can be taught to students of all ability levels. Students of varying levels of ability can work together in teams to find solutions to problems, record data, write reports, give presentations, and etc. The end result is students who understand how to collaborate with others and thrive in a team-oriented environment. Other advantages might include Encouraging knowledge application. In STEM education, students are taught skills that they can use in the real world. This motivates them to learn, as the skills acquired can be utilized immediately, and in ways that positively impacts them and their loved ones. The ability to apply knowledge to new and novel tasks will bode well for them when they enter the workforce. Other than that, it encourages tech use. STEM learning teaches kids about the power of technology and innovation. So, when the students encounter new technologies, they will be prepared to face them, instead of being hesitant or fearful. This will give them the upper hand in the global scale as the world is becoming more tech-centered. More so, it teaches problem solving. STEM education teaches students on how to solve problems by using the critical thinking skills. By engaging in STEM learning experiences, Students are able to examine problems and then create a plan to solve them. Last but not least, it encourages adaptation. To succeed in life, students must be able to apply what they have learned to various scenarios. STEM education teaches students on how to adapt the concepts that they have learned to various iterations of problems or issues. That is all for me. Thank you.
Assalamualaikum and hi. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Patricia. Hi, I'm Elvison. Hi, everyone. My name is Iskandar Haikal. Hi, everyone. I'm Kishan Vidyamurti, one of the alumni of the STEM Foundation program in the University of Trinidad. So the real question is, why do I choose to pursue in the STEM Foundation? First of all, there are many interesting subjects that make this course even more fun too. The course are very unique than any other course in Malaysia as there is no foundation that offers all the components of STEM once in the program. Most foundation courses are specified to certain science fields, thus not really expose students to the real STEM learning. I choose as a system because I'm Foundation is a fun-filled course and I'm very very interested about the STEM subject which is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Regarding the wow factor of this program, in the STEM Foundation program, they give a chance to a non-background student from high school to pursue their study in degree in a STEM subject. In addition, STEM Foundation also introduced the Hafazan program basically to those Hafiz and Hafiza to further their Hafazan here during the Foundation's time. Here comes the best part of all being in STEM Foundation program. If you are graduated from Foundation STEM, you will obtain a golden ticket or a VIP ticket to further your study in degree program offered by UMT. Since STEM Foundation is a closed system program. Once you're completed the STEM Foundation, when you want to enter your degree, you don't have to apply to the UP website anymore. The students are like a feeder to university, so they will be given a priority to enter and to register any of the courses they wanted. If you fulfill all the requirements for that particular course, Sounds good, right? That's the best part of being in STEM Foundation program. And not only that, not to forget our lecturers. Our lecturers in STEM Foundation Center, they are very, very friendly and really helpful in my study. You can knock their door at any time and you can throw any question to them and they'll help you with a smile on your face. The lecturers are really helpful, especially um, to the students with a non-background science so that the non-science students can success like the other students do. As a system, not only pay attention to academic, but also a platform for us to perform. You'll be given so many chances and so many platforms to expose yourself and expose your talents. In STEM Foundation program, we also did a lot of activities and joined a lot of fun competitions such as esports, seminars, webinars, talks, debate, innovation competitions, and many more. Like myself, I used to enjoy innovation competitions, which we as a team bring back gold medals for Pitram and Malaysia Technology Expo. That's all from me. Don't forget to apply for STEM Foundation at University of Malaysia Terengganu soon. Bye bye.
Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Can you hear me? Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. I am Nurul Asida, your chairperson for this session. First of all, I would like to welcome the presenters at attendees of this third IC STEM conference 2021. Before we begin, I will, I will very much appreciate to read all the participants and attendees who kindly put their phone on the silent mode throughout the session. Thank you. Before that, let me explain to you, the presentation will take about 15 minutes, where 12 minutes is allocated for presentation and another 20 minutes for Q&A session. If you have any questions, just raise your hand by clicking the button to ask the question, and the host will put you in queue. Ten minutes into the presentation, I will ring the bell once, and then two minutes after, I will ring the bell twice, and we will proceed to the Q and A session. After three minutes of Q and A session, I will ring the bell once, and we will proceed with the next presentation. Okay, before that, let me check your attendances. I hope all the presenters in this morning be in this room. If you don't mind, during the presentation, please open the camera. Okay, all the participants, if you don't mind, please open the camera. We're going to check the photography session. Can you open the camera, please? Miss Annie, Annie, please open the camera. We're going to check the photography session. And this morning, everyone so we should have uh Encik Ahmad Adnan, Madam Bizaya, Wan Ani, Wan Wan Waini, Ani, please open the camera. Madam Wan Waini, Ani Salihah, please open the camera and also the Siti Iwana Sharifa. Everyone, so uh, we have one Anis, one Hanin, and one Siti Iwana. Please open the camera if you don't mind. One Anis, one Hanin Saleha, calling for Siti Iwana. Please open the camera. 
Okay, let me remind you. This presentation will take about 15 minutes. First minute is allocate, allocate for the presentation. Another three minutes for Q&A session. Okay, and then 10 minutes into the presentation, I will ring the bell once. Two minutes after, I will ring the bell twice. And we proceed to the Q&A session. For the participants, please don't forget to fill in your attendance form by clicking the link in the chat box later. I hope for an Anis and also Siti Iwana can open the camera. One smile, ready everyone. Smile one, two, three. Okay, once again, one more time. Ready one, two, three. Thank you. Okay, we're going to uh, start the event at 10 o'clock. Just three minutes or six. Before that, let me share to you the video greeting from, from our director. Please thank you. Please have take a look at it. Assalamualaikum and hi to everyone. On behalf of the MT STEM Foundation as the organizer, a warm welcome and selamat datang to all of you. Heartfelt gratitude is extended to all distinguished speakers and participants for coming and participating in this I System 2021. I sincerely hope that all of our effort in sharing and exchanging ideas throughout this conference will create and enhance public interest as well as awareness on the importance of science, technology, engineering and mathematics known as STEM. It is hoped that everyone enjoy this virtual conference under the new norm and may you have a delightful and fruitful deliberation throughout the conference with us. With that note, I wish all of you happy conferencing and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let me repeat again. Okay. Uh, so this presentation will take about 50 minutes. Where 12 minutes is allocated for presentation. Another three minutes for Q&A session. So for Q&A session, please raise your hand by clicking the button to ask the question and the host will put you in queue. 10 minutes into the presentation, I will ring the bell once. Two minutes after, I will, I will ring the bell twice. And we will proceed to the Q&A session. After three minutes of Q&A session, I will, ring, I will ring the bell once and we will proceed with the next event. Okay. Okay, hopefully all the presenters are ready. We're going to start uh, about two minutes more. So during the presentation, if you don't mind, please open the camera.
Mr. Kata, I'm going to take the attendant first. So, Mr. Kata Kishan, are you here? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. I'm here. Okay. All right, second presenter, Mr. Shiva Balan. Are you here? Mr. Shiva Balan? And then, all right, third presenter, Encik Muhammad Nurki Daus. Are you here? Encik Muhammad Nurki Daus. Encik Muhammad Nurki Daus. Okay, Encik Ahmad Adenan, are you here? Encik Ahmad Adenan, ada di sini? Ah, ada, ada. Ada. Okay. All right, Miss Madam Vijaya. Madam Vijaya, are you yes, here? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Madam. Uh, Puan, Puan Anish Diana, are you here? Puan Anish? Yes, I'm here. All right, thank you. Uh, Puan Nur Arifa, are you here? Puan Nur Arifa? Okay. okay. Puan Nur Aini. Puan Nur Aini. Okay. Madam Nur Juraini. Yes, I'm here. Last presenter. And this afternoon is uh, Madam Zakia. Are you here? Madam Zakia? Wait for a moment. We still have another two minutes. So you can get ready. Okay, so without further ado, I will call our first presenter, Mr. Kati Kishan Manika Basangan from Sekolah Jenis Kebangsaan Tamil, Ladang Sundi, Perak. Please welcome. Yes, thank you for your... Please play my presentation. Okay, yes. Hi everyone, I'm Kartigesan Manike Basagan from SKT Ladang Sunli Bagasrai Pera. Today I'm going to present the entitled MD Lego Method Increase Student Understanding and Skills in the Topic of Multiplication and Division. Let's have a look on abstract of the research. This study aimed to address the problem of students in long multiplication and division in the conventional form. The research focused on improving mastering of multiplication and division algorithm. The MD LEGO methods was innovated to solve students' problems. Next is introduction. Students need to master this division operation because mathematics is a part of life. These are many problems in our daily life that require mathematical skill, especially multiplication and division to solve them. If the students fail to master the skill of multiplication and division, then they will not able to master other topics. I found that the students felt very confused to understand the concept of multiplication and division that the operation of multiplication is the inverse of the operation of division and vice versa. I have used the MD LEGO method to overcome this problem among students. I have collecting data through observation, students' worksheet, and questionnaires. Now, I'm going to explain about the problem statement. The main problem is students are making mistakes when doing long division method. This is because of careless mistake and also misunderstanding of the division concept. It's also very hard for students to recheck the answer. 
I also found that students were complexity in understanding the relationship between multiplication and division because both have a different method of solution. Now is focus of the study. There are two aspects that need to consider among primary school students. The first aspect is weakness and confuse in solving multiplication and division questions while the second aspect is the method used to solve multiplication and division questions. The second aspect is depending on each other in the mastering of multiplication and division skills among students. There are two research objectives. First, to study the use of MD Lego method in helping students to master multiplication and division skill. Second, to study students' response towards MD Lego method to master the skills of dividing numbers by two digit divisor. Now the research questions. First, the use of MD Lego method can help students master the skill of multiplication and the division. Second, what is the student's interest in MD Lego method to master the skill of dividing number by a two digit divisor? There are five students as my sample research. So I innovated a method to solve both division and multiplication problems. I innovated the long division method into stairs as MD Lego. I created each stairs according to place value. First stairs as ones, second stairs as tens, and following steps as hundred and thousand. This method can use for division and multiplication as well. Now I'm going to explain about how to apply our method in division. For example, 9168 divide 6. First, I have to write each number according to place value stairs correctly. Then, number 8, we need to write in place value 1s. Number 6 in place value 10s. Number 1 in place value 100s. And number 9 in place value 1000s. Other than that, we place number 6 on top of stairs. We have to refer time 6 to answer this question. First, we need to look at number 9. There is 1 6 in number 9. So we fix 1 and 6. Then we minus 6 from 9 and get 3 as a balance. Now we have to bring the balance 3 to downstairs and get 31. Like previous steps, we need to refer time 6 to know how many 6 in 31? We get 5 times 6 equal to 30. Now we fix 5 and 30, then minus 30 from 31. We bring the balance 1 to downstairs and get 16. 2 times 6 equal to 12. So I have to fix 2 and 12, then minus 12 from 16 and get 4. Then bring the balance 4 to downstairs and now the number is 48. If we refer times 6, we can get 8 times 6 equal to 48. Now we fix 6 and 48, then minus 48 from 48 and get balance 0. From this way, we can get the answer 1528. Now I explain how to use this method for multiplication. For example, 1528 times 6. For division, we put the question outside of the stairs. And now we need to put the question inside of stairs. Now I have to write every number according to place value stairs correctly. Number 8 we put in place value 1s, number 2 in place value 10s, number 5 in place value hundreds, and number 1 in place value thousands. Then we put 6 on top of stairs. 1 times 6 equal to 6. There are 3 zero in thousands. Therefore we add 3 zero beside number 6 and it's becoming 6000. 
Next step is 5 times 6 equal to 30. There is 2 zero in 100. So we need to add 2 zero with 30. Then we get 3000. Then 2 times 6 equal to 12. There is 1 zero in 10. Then become 120. Similarly, 8 times 6 is 48. There is no zero in 1s. So no need to add 0 with 48. From this method, we have to add up all the numbers from outside of the stairs. Now, the last answer is 9168. In division, we have to put the question outside of the stairs and answer inside of the stairs. For multiplication, we put instead of versa. Question inside of the stairs, the answer is outside of the stairs. From this, we can perceive clearly the relationship between division and multiplication. As a result, division is a reverse of multiplication. Multiplication is a reverse of division too. This is my weekly activity planning. First, description and repetition of the MD LEGO method for 15 minutes. Second, Exercise using material that are around for 15 minutes. Third is training using the MD LEGO methods for 30 minutes. In addition, we no need to depend on LEGO to use this method. Meanwhile, we can use window grill. Next, we can also use roof to apply my method. Moreover, we can use tiles to apply my method. I used four methods to collect the data. There are pre-test and post-test, semi-structure interview, worksheet, and observation notes. The four method data were analyzed as quantitative and qualitative. Next is triangulation. First, I use triangulation of source. Second is triangulation of time. The third is triangulation of method. This is the finding. The table shows comparison of pre and post test scores in percentage. By applying this method, it shows students' enhancement in division and multiplication. The post test proved that uh, all the students did well and able to answer all the questions correctly. This table shows mean marks for worksheet results. I give QR code in each exercise sheet. In case if students have any doubts, they can scan the QR code to get video guidance to recall their steps. Now let's see the students' response towards MD LEGO methods. Firstly, students feel happy and have fun while learning mathematics. Secondly, students pay full attention during the teaching and learning section. Thirdly, positive behavior changes in learning. I already had applied copyright for my innovation. I believe this method able to assist those who have difficulty in multiplication and division. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Katikasan. Now we open Q and A session. If the attendees of presenters have any question, you can click in the button as the question, and the host will click the button. Thank you. Okay. We open Q and A session. If any one of you want to ask the question. Just click on the button and the host will put you in queue. Question from presenter or attendees?
is no question. So we will proceed to the next presenter. Thank you, Mr. Katipisan. Okay, thank you. Video. All right, what a very interesting video. Now we proceed to the proceed to the next presenter. I will call upon our second presenter, uh, Mr. Siva Balan from Sekolah Jenis Kebangsaan Tamil Kerok Perak. Please welcome. Hi, uh, good morning. Yeah, can you listen to me? Yeah, can you listen to me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure, sure. We can listen to you. Okay, so um, a very good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Shiva and I'm from SJKT YMHA Typing. So today we are here to present our innovation where it is a team innovation, including the team leader, Ms. Sita Lashmi Balu, Mr. Balu Manikam, Ms. Uma Balu, Ms. Shantini Balu, and me, Shiva Balan. So our title is based on STEM. Effectiveness of STEM practices in improving students' interest in mathematic education. Uh, it's specifically on mathematics. Okay, so where it starts? We as an educator, based on our previous teaching experience, a group of remedial students unable to solve addition involve regrouping according to place value correctly. Okay, they can't do the play, place value correctly. So they know the basic addition knowledge, but they do not understand the regrouping concept. So this is where we have to come out with our new innovation idea. And this is where everything starts. So our presentation today is based on a video. Now I welcome all of you to watch our video. Thank you.
that's all. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I, I, I hope you all have learned a new thing from us. It's just a basic we have tried with, and I think uh, we have achieved what we need. Um, this, this method, we have started with uh, mathematics and STEM. After this, actually, I'm a language teacher. So after this, I'm bringing this chart to language subjects. So I hope it will work there also. So I think uh, that's all from us. Once again, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving us this chance to present our innovation today. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Sivan. Now we open Q&A session. If attendees or the presenter have any question, just click the button, and then the host will put you in queue. Before that, I would like to remind all the participants and attendees, please kindly put your phone on a silent mode throughout the session. So we still open to an session. Okay, if you notice, then I would like to move to the third presenter. Let's okay, I call upon uh, let's we call um Sir Muhammad Nur Fidaus bin Norawi from Sekolah Kebangsaan Penghulu Sumba Sarawak. Please welcome. Those you may start now. Uh, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm just uh, facing some technical issue. Okay, uh, okay, I will. Uh, can you hear my voice, uh, Miss yeah. Jefferson? Hello, yeah, can you hear voice. my voice? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I will present my slide. Okay. This is my slide. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you see my slide? Okay. Can you see my slide? Uh, Miss Miss Jefferson. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, my name is Muhammad Abdul bin Narawi. Okay. Let me introduce myself a little bit. Okay, this is my uh, project or my uh, innovation. Uh, I, I name it, uh, the title of my presentation is Development of InnoFitousN.com to Integrate Online Science Education Material. Okay, I am Cikgu Muhammad Nufitaus. I'm from Escape Hulu Imban, APD Selangau from Sarawak. Okay, uh, okay, that is me. Okay, that is a simple introduction. So what happened now, uh, because of this COVID-19 pandemic uh, has interrupted nine of, out of 10 students worldwide. Uh, my students are not uh, also affected. Uh, almost all of the world have been facing the issue. Okay, so based on the problem, uh, there are some, uh, there are some, uh, uh, professional or uh, uh, or a report from 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 UNESCO uh, which suggests how to overcome 
the impact of COVID-19 on education. So, uh, this is the suggestion from OECD, a uh, group of nation, uh, uh, what, negara-negara uh, maju, okay, they, uh, what, uh, this is their suggestion to overcome uh, the impact of COVID-19 is to provide uh, educational content for exploring if desired, uh, and online support for students and parents, okay? Okay, in Malaysia, uh, we also uh, use the term asynchronous learning. Okay, asynchronous learning is a, a form of learning which do not require the real-time interaction. For example, the use of Google Classroom where students can, uh, can interact with the le uh, learning material without the help of teachers. Students can learn for themselves. So, from this, uh, from this, from this, uh, from this, uh, from this type of learning, I come with the idea to create my website, which I named nofirdausn.com. Okay, what is so special with my innovation is uh, my website integrate a different learning platform, for example, YouTube, uh, Google Form. Uh, and many other uh, interactive learning platform such as quizzes, word wall, and others uh, website. Okay, what I'm doing, I'm integrating all of these websites into one single platform. What happened? This will ease the student to learn and help them to learn more because they don't have to search for the material all over the world. They just come to the website, norfredosn.com, and they can learn using multiple type of platform. That is what's so special about my innovation. Students can actively engage with the, with the educational material without the need to open multiple applications. The, the, the website simplify the way of children learn. It also help the parents during this uh, learning from home. As a support system, uh, my, my innovation also uh, come as a support system to help teacher execute the teaching, teaching and learning more effectively. Teacher can uh, teach more effectively because they don't have to search for a material other way. Uh, they just come to the website and all the material have already been organized systematically in the website. Then, what is new about this innovation? This uh, during the time I innovate this website, this is a one single. This is just the first and the, the one and only single platform to integrate multiple science education application. But nowadays, currently, uh, just this week, the uh, Kementerian Pendidikan Malaysia have announced they have made one portal like what I'm doing. They call it Sumberku. So basically, my innovation is one year in front of other uh, other type of learning website so during that time this is the first and the only one uh, science uh, science website learning educational material for sekolah rendah okay uh, which also help to support the teachers my website can be a support system to help teachers simplify and interactive uh, make their teaching more interactive the most important thing of my innovation, it helps students and teachers to learn better and to learn more. Okay, how do I uh, analyze, uh, the, how do I answer, does my innovation uh, success to help students uh, simplify and help the learning? Okay, I'm using three sources of data analysis. These data uh, tools is very, uh, accurate and also very reliable because it is made from online platform. For example, one of my data sources is from Data Google Analytics, YouTube Studio Channel Analytics, and Google Form Responses. When the student answer the Google Form in my website, the response also can be used as a tools to, to search for data analysis. Okay, first we look at the Google Analytics. Okay. Uh, based on Google Analytics, uh, the number of users have used the website is 15,562. 
11,000 coming from the social networks such as Facebook, sharing from Telegram, uh, direct search 3,000, uh, and other uh, other small proportion like organic search and referral. Okay, what we can see here, social network doesn't always uh, give bad impact to student. It also helps student to learn. Uh, this is the proof, uh, evidence that social social network can help student also can help student to learn. Right, right. The second as a bit. Okay, this is the usage analysis data. Out of fifteen thousand users, they spend currently. Uh, about 1.18 minute uh, using my uh, website, okay? And they are also returning to my website, which means uh, my website can help them to continuing their study, okay? They are, okay, we look at this table, 92% uh, is a new visitor and 7.7 .7 is a returning, returning visitors. They come again to the website and to learn more. Okay, if we look at this graph, we can see the number of users grow exponentially uh, after January 2021. What happened in January 2021? The government announced the closure of the, uh, the school, face-to-face uh, -face interaction, and change to uh, home-based learning. So we can see on January, the number of users using my website is grow exponentially. It shows that my website helped the student to learn during this home-based learning, or PDPR. Okay? Okay, uh, they, there is some cost to use the website. I'm, I am subscribing on Wix.com and also all the graphic material I'm using free pick. Okay, so all the material is licensed and the student can use it uh, freely because I have already uh, buy the license to use the material. Okay, so there is no issue on uh, licensing or, or the usage. Okay, okay. Exhibit 4 shows the demographic of, uh, of users that are using my website. Most of the students coming from uh, Lembah, Kelang, eh, Lembah, Lembah uh, Kuala Lumpur and Shah Alam. Okay? So most of uh, the users coming from urban area. Okay? They also, uh, and what we can see from this data, students from all over Malaysia can use my material. That is not, uh, my material is not limited to my student or Sarawak uh, student, but it also helps the other student in other country, uh, 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 other student in Malaysia. Okay, okay. The next tools I use to uh, to to evaluate my innovation, I use the Google Form data. Okay, okay. We can see one thousand two hundred sixty response I get from the one of the quizzes. The Google Form quizzes I put in the website. This show that uh, a lot of student, uh, a lot of student can use uh, the material using website. Okay, out of one thousand two hundred sixty, eighty, eighty, uh, the number of student forget a good. Okay, you can see that student coming from different school school from Malaysia. Okay, out of this uh, student. We can see that the achievement, uh, okay, we can see this, the average point they get, okay, this is the example, one of the example, the average point of student use uh, the material, they get 17.7 out of 20 points. This shows that uh, the website helped them to answer the quizzes and help them to learn better. And this shows that the website uh, is, is able to help the student learn effectively, okay? Without the need of teacher or other guidance to help them, they can learn on the surf using the material. Okay. Okay. Uh, commercialization and future future potential. Okay, this is a free to use science learning which website which will benefit students from all different types of economic background. Students did not have to pay to use this uh, material. I also did not have to pay other teacher to create the educational content. I'm use a free to use uh, content in in the internet. For example, other teacher YouTube videos and other teachers uh, quizzes, other teacher material. This is all a free to use uh, material. So what I'm doing, I'm integrating all this material into one single stop platform. Okay. This creates the space for teacher to collaborate 
uh, this website can help teacher collaborate on making educational material online. Okay, the next uh, future potential, it will help Sarawak state educational policy to teach science and mathematics in English. Uh, for your all information, we in Sarawak, we changed to DLP, dual language program, uh, entirely. 100% of students in Sarawak are learning science and mathematics in English. Currently, the number of uh, material for DLP program is very limited. So by creating this material, I help the government of Sarawak to make sure the successfulness of educational uh, DLP policy in Sarawak. And this is also a single online learning platform for primary science educational. There are many potential in my website, but I still Hidawas. want... I, yeah? Hidawas, maybe the time is already yeah. finished. The time is already okay, finished. Okay, this is... Uh, okay, lastly, yeah? Okay, uh, my recognition, uh, I got bronze medal for... a uh, bronze award for international edu, edu innovation. And I uh, my website also have... Uh, also been awarded gold medal in costume 2021. Okay, for that, uh, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pidol. So we have one question here from the attendees. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the question is, how do you motivate your students to use your website since their student might be facing difficulty to access the internet? Okay. The internet. Okay. Thank you so much for the question. Okay, let's look at the number. Where where does the student come? Uh, the source of uh, the many people, okay, many users of my website coming from urban area, which means they have uh they have good or excellent internet connection. But for people that coming from rural area, that that make another problem. Okay. Okay, how to motivate? Okay, for example, uh, okay, how to motivate during, okay, during March 2021, uh, we have uh, PDP, uh, the student have come to the school, right? During that time, uh, one month, in that time window, one month, I'm using this uh, website to my student in the school, using the school laptop. So, student that did not have uh, internet connection, the rural student, uh, okay, for your information, I'm teaching in rural area, okay? What I'm doing, do, if uh, during the time that they, they come to the school, I bring them to the computer lab uh, and uh, using this website to learn. They are very motivated because in my website, they are, uh, in my website, they are, uh, a material which use gamification technique, for example, word wall quizzes. Okay, this uh, this uh, type of learning uh, gamification really help and motivate them to learn more. Okay, that is my answer. I hope I can answer the question clearly. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Fidawas. So, any questions from the attendees? If you have any questions, just uh, click the button and those will put you in queue. Okay, if no, thank you so much, Mr. Pidawas. It was very good okay. explanation. Okay, thank you. We thank move, you so much. All right, we move to the next presenter. We would like to invite Encik Ahmad Adenan bin Muhammad Shukri from Sekolah Kebangsaan Penghulu Imban Sarawak. Please welcome. Mr. Ahmad Adenan, you may start now.
Okay, uh. clear eh? Okay, okay. Boleh, boleh. Okay. Uh. okay uh, Assalamualaikum dan selamat pagi. Uh, saya Ahmad Adnan dan Muhammad Syukri, uh, pelajar PhD Pendidikan Sains dari USM di bawah penyeliaan Dr. Nurjahan Ahmad. Pada uh, hari ini saya akan bentangkan uh, satu kajian yang bertajuk uh, Kit Pembelajaran Integrasi Sistem melalui pembelajaran berasaskan cabaran terubah suai uh, iaitu kit cabaran fatih the focus uh, pada pagi ini adalah pengukuran kebolehpercayaan okey uh, kajian ini adalah uh, berdasarkan kepada penyataan masalah berikut uh, yang pertama uh, pelajar hanya terhad kepada pemerolehan uh, pemerolehan input sahaja sedangkan dunia masa kini memerlukan aspek uh, aplikasi penciptaan dan kepintaran Uh, yang kedua, uh, pelajar tidak dapat menyelesaikan masalah yang melibatkan uh, pemikiran uh, kreatif dan kritis. Ketiga, uh, pelajar kurang dikaitkan dengan latihan hands-on dan kurang dikaitkan dengan pelbagai uh, kaedah. Yang keempat, uh, pemikiran kritis dalam subjek sains di peringkat sekolah masih lagi kurang dapat menjelaskan domain ataupun uh, sub kemahiran yang perlu diberikan perhatian khusus. Yang kelima, pelajar berasa tidak selamat dan kurang yakin untuk menjawab soalan terbuka dalam aktiviti pembelajaran berasaskan masalah. Dan yang terakhir ialah kecenderungan pemikiran kritis pelajar ni kurang dieksploitasi. Sedangkan individu yang memiliki kecenderungan tersebut mempunyai kelebihan dari segi cara berfikir, pencapaian, kemahiran proses sains dan cara menyelesaikan masalah. Maka berdasarkan penyataan masalah ini, saya saya membangunkan satu uh, uh, satu produk iaitu uh, kit cabaran fatih yang mana dalam uh, kit cabaran fatih ini uh, teori yang mendasari kajian ini ialah teori teori yang mendasari kajian ini ialah teori konstruktivism uh, teori situasi pembelajaran dan juga uh, teori uh, beban kognitif yang mana kit cabaran fatih ini dibangunkan uh, berdasarkan model 4D Uh, ya, uh, oleh Tiaga Rajin uh, et al 1974 dan kit cabaran fatih ini uh, uh, dibangunkan uh, berdasarkan uh, model pembelajaran berasaskan cabaran ter, uh, terubah suai dari segi uh, aktiviti yang dilaksanakan yang mana uh, diubah suai dengan mengintegrasikan uh, strategi uh, scenario based learning uh, komponen uh, computational thinking uh, dan diadaptasi Uh, model uh, challenge based learning dan juga integrasi STEM uh, Discipline Science, Teknologi, Engineering dan Matematik sebagai aktiviti yang dilaksanakan uh, Seterusnya uh, Daripada pembangunan uh, kit cabaran fatih ini uh, akan di, uh, uji ke, uh, dikaji keberkesanan dari segi uh, tiga dependent variable iaitu uh, kemahiran uh, pemikiran kritis uh, kecenderungan pemikiran kritis dan juga uh, kemahiran uh, pemikiran komputasional. Okay, dan uh, ini uh, model 4D uh, berdasarkan empat fasa iaitu pertama define penentuan iaitu melibatkan uh, need uh, assessment. Yang kedua uh, design reka bentuk, uh, reka bentuk pembangunan kit dan juga uh, reka bentuk Uh, pembangunan uh, pembangunan instrumen itu sendiri bagi uh, menguji uh, dependent variable yang ketiga uh, pembangunan uh, dan hari ini fokus uh, pembentangan adalah uh, kajian rintis uh, pilot test untuk uh, melihat uh, untuk mengukur kebolehpercayaan dan kit ini telah dinilai oleh uh, tujuh orang pakar dan uh, indeks uh, secara total uh, indeks CVI yang baik iaitu 0.98 dan dari segi aktiviti uh, CVI 0.94. Okey, uh, untuk metodologi uh, mengukur kebolehpercayaan ni uh, saya menggunakan uh, pengukuran uh, kebolehpercayaan internal consistency reliability iaitu kaedah uh, alpha perkali alpha. Uh, dan untuk menentukan ke uh, kebolehpercayaan uh, is, uh, satu instrumen uh, telah dibangunkan iaitu soal selidik uh, kebolehpercayaan kit cabaran fatih yang uh, diadaptasi daripada uh, pengkajian lepas uh, soal selidik ini uh, mengandungi 44 item yang mana uh, 44 item bagi 4 uh, aktiviti dalam kit 
iaitu melibatkan enam fasa dalam model pembelajaran berasaskan cabaran yang yang telah diubah suai dan menggunakan uh, Likert 5 uh, uh, Likert Scale uh, dan kajian rintis ini melibatkan uh, seramai 32 uh, murid uh, tingkatan 3 di daerah Baling Kedah yang dilaksanakan selama 2 bulan bagi 4 aktiviti dalam kit Okay, dan uh, ini ialah carta alih keboleh percayaan uh, untuk mendapatkan keboleh percayaan pertama pembinaan instrumen dibangunkan kedua melaksanakan kajian rintis kemudian mentadbir soal uh, soal selidik uh, kemudian analisis data mentafsir data dan jika uh, mendapat uh, keboleh percayaan yang baik maka uh, kit cabaran Fatih ni boleh digunakan untuk mengkaji uh, keberkesanan uh, dapatan kajian uh, di sini uh, mengikut uh, HER uh, 2016, uh, skala pengukur bagi keboleh percayaan uh, menggunakan perkali alpha 0.7 dan corrected item total correlation uh, perlu lebih uh, 0.30 maka uh, acceptable uh, uh, dari segi uh, reliability lah. Okay, uh, dan kalau lihat di sini uh, dari segi keseluruhan, uh, kit cabaran Fatih uh, nilai alpha adalah 0.88 dan uh, korelasi bagi item uh, menepati apa yang uh, Hair et al. 2006, uh, 2006 sarankan dan begitu juga dengan setiap aktiviti cabaran Fatih 1, 2, 3 dan 4 uh, nilai keboleh percayaannya adalah uh, baik okay, uh, jadi itu sahaja pembentangan saya Terima kasih, thank you Encik Ahmad Adenai Ok so we open Q&A session for the presenter and the attendee and ask any questions by clicking the button and I hope we put you in queue. Okay, any questions from the attendee or the presenter? Okay, if no, we proceed to the uh, next presenter. Terima kasih kepada Nisi Ahmad Danai. Thank you so much. Okay. okay, so we will, okay, thank you. Right, we would like to invite our next presenter, Madam Vijaya Balakrishnan from Sekolah Kebangsaan Tamin Jaya, Selangor. Please welcome, Madam. Yes, thank you, Puan Eru. Uh, oh, uh, Ahmad, Ahmad Adnan Shukri will stop sharing. Share application. So, can I share the slide now? Sure. All right, done. Okay. Okay. So, I hope you can see my slides. Yeah, it's very clear. All right. Okay, that's good. Okay, a very good day to everyone. I'm Vijay Balakrishnan, a teacher from SK Amin Jaya and a postgraduate student under HLPS scheme. Uh, from UPM, right? So, uh, I would like to share our idea and also study on make a central learning approach to craft STEM education in primary school, a systematic literature review, all right? So, uh, basically in this presentation, I will explain to you the scope of STEM for primary schools and I'm going to introduce the make a central learning approach and a systematic uh, a finding and also a method and also finding from our systematic literature review. All right, so let's move on to the next. STEM education, is it uh, possible or impossible to implement in primary school? Is it necessary or unnecessary? A great topic to discuss, to study, and also to explore. So according to uh, North Nation, our education nation aspiration is to increase students' and teachers' interest, attitude, and motivation, uh, hold on, uh, motivation in STEM and career awareness related to the STEM disciplines. All right. So, according to STEM conceptual framework of science, uh, Malaysia, primary science is, is, is responsible for ensuring uh, that the students are able to make connection and uh, build the foundation. So, it's clearly stated that uh, uh, in primary school, we are just going to introduce the general idea of STEM elements in science. All right. So, let's move on to the maker center learning. What is that? We have heard about uh, uh, teacher center learning, pupil center learning, learning right? So, maker center learning is its center on learners' contacts and knowledge is built through producing and engaging with physical objects and following 
doing ideas uh, of John Piaget and Samad Pepper. All right. So it's um, a pedagogical approach where it's closely related or it's derived from maker space. What is maker space? The spaces for hands on research and learning through making so called maker space in formal and informal education have achieved global popularity. Is this new in Malaysia? Not at all. Our smart entrepreneurs, they have commercialized this concept by setting up a uh, maker space in a uh, uh, shopping mall, uh, private uh, institutions and uh, uh, offices. All right. So for further info, you can scan this QR code to obtain our first article on it. Okay, so how does it start in Malaysia? All right, so the maker movement in Malaysia and so on and so forth. Basically, they have digital and also fabrication aspect as listed in this table. And you want roof to promote STEM elements, all right? Apart from that, since we are dealing and going to deal with generation alpha, Right, so a smart move of our MOE by adding reasoning skill as one of the basic skill in a primary school is a great decision. So the implementation, however, the implementation and the efficacy of these skills need uh, an in-depth study. All right. So besides classroom-based assessment as a redirected classroom teaching and learning. Directly and indirectly, it has given a chance for a students uh, for a skillful learning. All right. So in this matter, hands-on activities, projects, and presentations are not being fully utilized by the teachers and also students. All right. So in action, MOE 2016 has stated that insufficient use of technology, materials, and poor usage of science lab and a computer lab. All right. So in this matter, I would like to highlight the usage of a science lab in the primary schools. Uh, the students are still okay, even though there is no harmful chemical or substance in a primary schools. Yet the students are still following the rules as in secondary and tertiary uh, education. All right. Something think about it. Okay, so we're supposed to give them a space uh, for them to move around freely and explore the world of science with sufficient tools, materials, equipment, ICT, uh, gadgets, and so on and so forth. All right, so these are some of the issues in science education in primary schools. Well, uh, let's go through uh, what uh, the experts say about this. STEM education, uh, STEM education, all right? So innovation in curriculum, pedagogical, uh, and assessment can help to strengthen STEM education efforts, all right? Access to low-cost recycled material in the classroom can support practices. And by creating a resource-rich environment, such as makerspace, can motivate students to learn the complex matter of STEM, all right? So... STEM infused maker concept. How are we going to implement? Is that worth for Malaysian primary schools? So here comes our study. All right, the systematic literature review. Uh, to find out what are the STEM practices with the maker concept in the primary schools. And as a research question one, and a research question two is what are the STEM infused maker concept approaches in the classroom? All right. So, uh, the method and analysis, although we have uh, many academic, uh, what is that, uh, database, uh, but uh, we have chosen Scopus because it has the largest abstract and citation database of peer-reviewed literature, all right? So, we, we used at once uh, search to find the appropriate uh, research string with some trial and error methods. The asterisk symbol, the star has right uh, stars, help us to widen up uh, and also refine our uh, search. All right. So about the selecting and reporting the eligible article from the scopes, uh, Prisma was used, and I will talk about it more in detail in next slide. All right. 
So let's have a look what are the limitations that we have set. Uh, five years of studies, only English article from journal, uh, which are at the final stage, uh, were included in the study. All right. So, so this is the, uh, what is PRISM, right? Uh, okay, so this is the uh, recommended checklist of preferred reporting item for a systematic review and meta-analysis. So we have adopted the updated guideline 2020 statement, all right? So there are three stages, as you can see. Uh, the identification is the first step, followed by the screening as the second step. And we have chosen only eligible articles at the uh, third stage to be included in our SLR. We as a team uh, work together to refine and ensure only eligible studies have been included in this study. All right, so this is how we choose the eligible articles from the scopus. All right, so here are the eligible articles. Uh, which we have presented in, in a table form uh, in our uh, paper, all right? So the purpose and the uh, primary result of each study have included for further reference and pinpoint their practices in order to obtain answer for our research question one, okay? All right, so about the results and discussion, uh, for our first uh, research question, what are the, uh, the STEM practices with the maker concept in the primary schools? The bar chart shows uh, the STEM uh, practices with maker concept in the primary schools. So we have identified uh, seven practices. So in this matter, all right, integrated in science curriculum and maker space, uh, in STEM project have recorded the highest frequency. Here, I would like to highlight that uh, these are not the best practice since we do not analyze uh, the efficacy of each practices. However, we would like to recommend uh, these, uh, these two for a in-depth study, all right? So these are the things. Okay, let's move on to, oops. Let's move on to the next slide. All right, so this pie chart is illustrating uh, the STEM infused maker concept approaches in the classroom. All right, so four studies out of nine uh, have uh, recommended the usage of recycled material to support practices. So, following uh, by other approaches, here I would like to highlight the, the usage of a maker kit, which consists of uh, tools and electrical components for a school to make movable 3D uh, models, which we easily can get nowadays, all right? Microbic component, you know, to set timer to run a, a specific model to make the 3D model rotate and so on and so forth. It's more exciting. It will create student to learn, right? Okay, so the most interesting finding in this uh, study is uh, the usage of the maker space. So it has created a, a to handle, all right, to handle a big classroom exactly like Malaysian classroom, 30 to 40 students with budget constraint, all right? Okay, so these are the STEM infused maker concept application that we are, we are planning to intervene uh, according to Malaysia uh, context, all right? So by using recycled items and so on and so forth. All right, so to sum up, learning by doing as a maker center learning approach in the classroom is one of the way to craft STEM education. I didn't tell the best way, but one of the way based on my, uh, our literature review, all right? Integrated in science curriculum and maker space in STEM project are recommended as a STEM practices infused maker concept, all right? So usage of recycled material to make 3D models with sufficient uh, making kit tools and maker space back are the maker concept approaches in the classroom. People think when it comes to maker space, wow, that is, uh, you know, like a 21st century skill classroom with full of IT tools. Not really. We can simplify the concept. All right. So here we would like to recommend that those who are interested 
So the challenges in the above practices and approaches need to be analyzed critically, finding and filling up gaps in uh, STEM infused maker center learning in primary school is possible with great initiative from stakeholder and finding from other databases are uh, recommended, strongly recommended to widen up our scope. All right, so these are the reference that I've stated in this uh, slides and uh, that's all from me. Thank you. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, University of Putra Malaysia for their research grant and also Bahagian Kerajaan Pendidikan Malaysia uh, for their financial support for their study. And not forgetting, I see STAM 2021 University of Malaysia Tunggani for this opportunity. All right. So, most welcome your commands, suggestions, and ideas uh, to further refine our study. All right. For further inquiry, you can may email us. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Vijaya, for great explanation. Okay, so yeah. we open Q and A session. So, if all the attendees have a question, you just uh, click the button, and they will put you in queue. Any questions? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have one question. Uh, yeah. Can you uh, explain more about the term infuse? Okay. Infuse. Yes. Or, yes. Thank you. So, so infuse. Okay. STEM practices. Prime practices. We can have problem based, project based. We, uh, there are many practices. All right. So here our focus is make a concept. So how we can do the STEM practices, how we can practice, be a practical, you know, apply the STEM practices with make a concept idea. Infuse means bergabung, okay? Kita gabungkan, uh, make a concept uh, to implement STEM uh, practices, all right? So that's all. Hope I un answer your question, Mr. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mr. Fidels. Yeah, Mr. Fidels, thank you so much. Okay, okay, thank you. All right, welcome. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fedaus and Madam Vijaya. So we open to an question. Anyone? One of you, we still have another one minute for this session. All right. Madam Vijaya, I have a question for you. Is it okay? Oh, wow. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> I think it's very simple question. Yeah. Okay. How to create awareness among teachers and STEM education? Sorry, sorry. Can you repeat the question? I cannot hear it clearly. Okay. How, how to create the awareness? Okay. Awareness among uh, among students about the first STEM education in primary school. All right. School. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, for primary school, we are at the initial stage, right? So we have done a few, all right? So I, I already stopped the video. You want me to show the slides again? Yes, yes. Can I? <laughs> all right. Actually, we conducted this in a small scale in classroom in 2017, all right? We asked, we, we, you know, for, for the month of uh, bulan apa, recycle, barang-barang tu kan. So, kita minta murid-murid semua untuk bina sesuatu model, uh, pastikan kereta. Itu sahaja arahan. So, they come up with uh, so many things. And then, uh, I realized the weakness, the loophole in our primary syllabus. Uh, People are uh, advanced. They already know. They by watching television, they get idea from internet. So we, as a teacher, need to provide the uh, the chance for them to present their creativity. All right. So this is how we can motivate them by conducting a small uh, competitions, exhibitions. All right. We have, we have started that in uh, uh, our schools, and why I'm here because of that project. Okay, it's very effective. Okay, so that's all. Okay, thank you, Madam. All right, thank you so much. All right. So, okay, we move to the next presenter, uh, Puan Anis Diana Binti Halim from Sekolah Menengah Sains Seri Putri Kuala Lumpur. So before that, I would like to remind, for the presenter, you only have 12 minutes 
for the presentation, another three minutes for the Q&A session. Okay, for Miss Diana. If you don't mind, please open your camera for Anis Diana during the presentation. One Anis, please unmute your microphone. So you can't hear you. Yes, I'm here, okay. but sorry, yeah, I got a problem. Yeah. Okay. It's okay, it's okay. Never mind. Okay. Are you ready? Well, I'm ready, but say that to me, my sure. Yeah, okay, wait, eh? wait for a moment. Thank you. Okay. can you open the camera? I I can open the camera, but the problem now is saya dah tak nampak screen. Oh, like that. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, tak biasa dengan webex dia tu masuk ke atas. Okay, okay. start the video. Okay, sorry ya. Eh? Alright, Puan Anis. It's okay. Can you see my PowerPoint? Uh, so far not yet. Okay now, we can see your PowerPoint. Okay, okay sorry. It's okay. I think we already test. Let's take a look. Sorry. Okay. You may start now. Okay. I want to enlarge the uh, PowerPoint slide. Okay, is it okay like this? Okay. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Okay, I may start now. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and have a good day to everyone. Okay, so I am Anis Diana from Sekolah Menengah Sains Sri Putri. Would like to present our research conducted by me and my friends. That is Diana Jamari. That is entitled Online Learning Among Boarding School Students During, during COVID-19 Pandemic. Okay, uh, as an introduction, uh, as we know, uh, when COVID-19 pandemic hit Malaysia, movements control order uh, is announced by our Malaysian government. So due to this, uh, schools is closed and everyone, uh, students in Malaysia continue their learnings through online learnings. Uh, but for this uh, boarding school students, uh, before COVID-19. As we know that as a uh, boarding school students, uh, they spend um, all their time in schools. Okay, uh, they will stay at hostel and after they stay at hostel, they will continue their learning in their, in their classroom. So most of the time is spending, they spend most of the time uh, in schools, follow the routine, follow the uh, rules from the school's uh, rules and also the daily routine also have been uh, followed by the school's rules and but when the uh, school is closed the, their life is totally changed and uh, this research uh, is conducted because of they are a limited uh, sources to understand the routines of the boarding school students during COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so this research is conducted to understand uh, what is their um, scenario during online learnings, uh, during online learning when this COVID-19 pandemic hit uh, Malaysia. So uh, as a research questions, in our uh, research, we are going to, we have three research questions, which is we are going to answer three research questions that is, that are, what are students experience during online learning? And uh, we want to understand what the students problem during online learning and what are the students opinion during online learning? And as a methodology, uh, this research actually uh, is uh, the design of, of the research is a qualitative exploratory design where we use, uh, it involves, sorry, it involves 83 students uh, from boarding school students uh, in Kuala Lumpur and Selangor. 
and a data collection method is we use as an open-ended survey through online questionnaire, which is uh, we use uh, an online uh, method and online we use, you use a Google form and Microsoft form as a tools to collect the method. And because of this is as an open-ended uh, survey, it's more to qualitative uh, research. So the data analysis method, we use as a thematic analysis to understand uh, and to answer the research questions related uh, to our research. And uh, as a result, okay, uh, so the for, for the first, uh, questions that we want to answer that is we want to understand what is their experience during online learning so the first is we are uh, the teams is as uh, the students experiences when they are at home so they will get uh, environment distractions okay environment distraction and these distractions will come from the family distractions okay which is uh, for the students who have a uh, lot of sibling they will distract okay by their sister or younger sister during their um, uh, classes okay and uh, they also distracted with the house call that they needed to do okay um and they also distracted with the media social such as uh they they more focusing on youtube on game online during online learning okay this is the their experience during online learning okay uh besides that um when online learning they also get the social support okay uh from the families teachers, schools, and online research, okay? For the family, uh, the family provided the spacious place for them uh, to, for them uh, to involve in a online, uh, online learning. They provide a gadget, okay? And uh, for the teachers, okay? For the teachers, uh, the teachers give a full support to them, okay? Through online learning, which is they, uh, because of, the learning is uh, conducted by online, so they said that they can reach the teachers uh, 24 hours uh, over seven. Okay, uh, the teachers will respond even though that they are in night or they are in a uh, weekend. So uh, this give a more convenience for them uh, to studies. Okay, compare them uh, when they are at schools. They are restricted with the rules and full of the classes, so they cannot see some of the teacher during the school time. Okay, uh, and uh, for the school, okay, for those who don't have a gadget, okay, they also get a uh, support from the school where the school support the gadget. And uh, the, the most important is uh, for the boarding school students, okay, uh, during the online learning. Okay, they say that they have, they will get a lot of online sources. Okay, they can browse a lot of online sources, compare them face-to-face -face learning because when they are at the school or the hostel, they are restricted to bring their laptop, to bring their gadget to the schools. Okay, so they are only depends on the reference books. Okay, uh, but when they are at home, doing their online learning so they said that they can uh, refer to the many online sources okay to make them to understand the concepts of learning okay that is the social support that we, they experience during the online learning and uh, beside that uh, uh, their experience also they are free they said they are free from the school law which is they don't have to wear the uh, school uniform and they also have a flexible time and uh, for self-exploratory learning okay and as a boarding school student as we know that they are a selected students come uh, come from the very good academic background so they uh, will 
uh, they we are they are not going to depends only on the sources given by teachers during online learning but they always explore another learning sources okay provided in the online sources okay uh, to uh, help them to study through online learning and they also have a high disciplines uh, through online learning which is they, will, uh, they said that we, they will set the alarm, they will obey the, to the uh, online learning schedules uh, to follow the online learning. Okay, this is their experience uh, during online learning. But uh, for online learning, okay, they also have a problem during online learning, which is uh, they are uh, they have uh, they also face with the internet disruptions. As I see, this is a most of the problem, and they are uh, also have the online learning devices, and uh, the problem, the most problem have by the students is they are lack of social interactions because of uh, before the COVID nineteen hit um hit malaysia in the schools they have a lots of um work group in the schools okay but when the when they are at home they can do the uh work group but the problem is uh, the work group is they cannot attach to each other and they feel that they lack of the social interactions uh, among friends and teachers during online learning. And uh, for the last uh, result, to answer the last research questions, that is what are the students' opinion uh, on online learning. Uh, as we, from our result, we get two uh, opinion during online learning which is uh, the first one is students more prefer face to face uh, prefer face to face learning rather than online learning and for this result okay we uh, from we as a mind that the the students who prefer face to face uh, learning is the students who have a internet uh, disruptions and in environment and uh, disruptions during online learning but uh, there are opinions uh, also during online learning, which is they want to continue the online learnings, okay, rather than face-to-face -face learning. Okay, and this type of students uh, uh, is a type of student who have a good social support and they also have a good self-exploratory learning and they uh, feel that the online learning is much better uh, than face-to-face -face learning because of it is freedom from the school law because they can uh, initiate yourself to learn and use more online sources to get uh, to learn from the online sources so uh, as a conclusion, uh, we know that actually uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, uh, it will change our students' routine. Uh, as they are, uh, even though they are, uh, will have a very good background, academic background, but these situations are also uh, inculcate students to be a procrastinate a students and, but uh, that is not only have a pro that uh, that is only how to have a con but it's only ha it also have a pro where for the students who have a higher self-discipline self-exploratory or self-regulated learning uh, they can learn by themselves even though in this pandemic so uh, I think that's all from me and as you know this research I have conducted at the early uh, MCO which is, is a PKP1 okay uh, to understand more about my students uh, in online the, the scenario of online learning among uh, my among my uh, among boarding school students okay thank you Puan Anif there is one question for you so uh, which is the larger group? Which is the larger group? Student who prefer okay, online who prefer or online student who prefer face learning? Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you say which is the larger group who prefers online and uh, prefer online learning, uh, actually for the students online, it's uh, like uh, the more actually 
uh, if I can say that they prefer online learning compared than face to face learning. Okay, for the boarding yes. school system, they prefer online learning compared than face to face learning. As I said that, uh, why they prefer online learning compared than face to face learning? Okay, uh, because uh, they get a uh, social support, a lot of social support from the school teacher. That I think that is more uh, important. Um, uh, uh, more the, uh, important uh, in this uh, time because uh, when I ask to the students why they want to uh, prefer to online learning because they feel that they can handle their self and we have to understand that they have a very, uh, maybe they are come a very good background can very good academic background which is they can uh, do self studies teacher just help them to studies and they can just uh, support them during this uh, covid-19 pandemic okay thank you for ani so Yes, uh, yes, my, uh, my data, uh, my data is qualitative, which is, uh, with I, if we refer to the, uh, Cikgu Fidaw's question, I cannot, uh, state which is the largest, uh, group, okay, which is the largest group, either it is online, but I just answer randomly, okay, from the question, which is my, uh, students, most of them, because this is I done with the two uh two schools most of, from the data most of the students okay uh will prefer online learning more than uh face to face learning okay okay uh so survey is not survey is qualitative the survey is qualitative because of uh I done it in uh oh, sorry eh? sorry because I answered okay, the questions okay. in the uh, meeting chat from the Cikgu Suresh Kuma, uh, which is uh okay. the other your design is qualitative but your data collection is survey yes data collection is survey but I am uh, op, uh I done it in open ended open ended questions so open ended question I can done it in a uh qualitative research ah uh. okay any question okay. From the audience? Okay. Okay. If not, thank you so much, Puan Anis uh, Diana. Okay, thank all you. Right. Thank you for all. Okay. So, uh, we move to the next presenter. We would like to invite Nur Arifa Binti Moidir from Sekolah Menengah Sains Teki Terengganu. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, yeah, sure. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Salam sejahtera and good morning to all. Puan okay. Arifah boleh dekat sikit tak mikrofon? Okay. Okay. Alright. Okay, Puan Arifah. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Salam sejahtera and good morning to all. Okay, my name is Nur Arifah. I'm here. I'm here. Together with... Uh, Puan Nurul Syafina Sinti uh, SISD Plus Officer from PPD Daerah Besut Terengganu would like to present our research entitled uh, Pengaruh Pelaksanaan Komuniti Pembelajaran Profesional dan Kesediaan Guru Bidang Sejarah di Negeri Terengganu okay, Before that, okay, I would like to present my research in Malay Okay Baiklah, sedikit pengenalan tentang CVAT, STEM dan Kerajaan sentiasa uh, committed dengan dalam melaksanakan hasrat CPM bagi melaksanakan STEM dalam bidang CVET. Untuk pengetahuan semua, CVET merupakan uh, singkatan bagi Technology and Vocational Education and Training di Malaysia. Okay. Mata pelajaran yang ditawarkan di dalam bidang CVET merupakan sebahagian daripada komponen STEM yang kurang menjadi perhatian umum Lantaran stigma masyarakat terhadap aliran TVET yang dianggap sebagai pendidikan kelas kedua berbanding aliran lain di Malaysia. Namun kini, usaha memperkasakan bidang TVET sebagai salah satu laluan kerjaya semakin mendapat perhatian dan sekaligus menjadikan TVET sebagai komponen utama bagi memenuhi keperluan tenaga kerja mahir di Malaysia. Bagi STEM pula, STEM merupakan dasar pendidikan sains teknologi, kejuruteraan dan matematik yang selari dengan sistem TVET dan aspirasi KPM 
yang mengintegrasikan STEM dalam komponen kurikulum bagi memastikan modal insan yang dilatih mempunyai nilai, kemahiran dan pengetahuan yang relevan dengan pasaran kerja masa kini menuju IR 4.0. KPP pula secara konsepnya dilihat mampu menjadi platform bagi menguruskan bidang CVET dalam memberi dan menerima bimbingan secara pelbagai kaedah contohnya seperti peer coaching, teacher sharing session, lesson study dan lain-lain alat kolaboratif yang bersesuaian. KPP juga diharap dapat menjadi budaya dalam strategi memperkasakan STEM bagi guru-guru CVET khususnya di negeri Terengganu. Terdapat dua soalan kajian bagi kajian ini. Yang pertama, untuk menentukan hubungan antara kefahaman guru dan kesediaan guru dengan amalan KPP di sekolah. Dan yang kedua, bagi menentukan pengaruh kefahaman dan kesediaan guru terhadap amalan KPP. Kajian ini telah... Uh, okay, soalan kajian secara uh, detailnya adalah, ada yang pertama, adakah terdapat hubungan antara kefahaman guru dan amalan KPP? Yang kedua, adakah terdapat hubungan antara kesediaan guru dan amalan KPP? Yang ketiga, uh, adakah uh, wujud pengaruh kefahaman guru terhadap amalan KPP? Dan adakah wujud um, pengaruh kesediaan guru terhadap amalan KPP? Jadi soalan kajian bagi kajian ini ada empat. Okay. Yang dua sebentar tadi adalah objektif kajian. Okay. Seterusnya, kajian ini telah merujuk beberapa kajian terdahulu berkaitan KPP. Yang pertama adalah kajian daripada Peter Sange 2004 yang menyatakan prinsip asas KPP terdiri daripada lima disiplin iaitu penguasaan kendiri, model mental, perkongsian visi, pembelajaran sepasukan dan pemikiran bersistem. Dufour, Iker dan Manny 2006 menyatakan KPP merupakan satu bentuk kolaborasi dalam kalangan guru-guru yang komited dan berterusan dalam melakukan inquiry atau kajian tindakan bagi meningkatkan prestasi murid. Dan uh, Zamri 2014 menyatakan terdapat guru-guru yang berdepan dengan cabaran dalam beberapa aspek penting berkaitan PDPC seperti aplikasi kaedah pengajaran, menentu, uh, penentuan aktiviti pelajar, teknik interaksi, penerapan nilai, menentukan bahan perancangan pengajaran, bahan bantu belajar dan membuat penilaian bagi PDPC. Hal ini dapat diatasi dengan pelaksanaan KPP dalam kalangan guru-guru di sekolah. Oleh itu, pemerkasaan KPP dalam kalangan guru-guru di sekolah perlu dipergiat oleh pihak pentadbir. Okey, seterusnya, metodologi bagi kajian ini telah melibatkan uh, sampel kajian secara purposive sampling di mana 152 orang responden dalam kalangan guru-guru TVET di seluruh negeri Terengganu telah dilibatkan dalam kajian kami. Okey, kajian ini dilakukan secara kuantitatif di mana soalan uh, instrumen soal selidik telah diedarkan melalui Google Form. Seterusnya, dapatan uh, kajian, data kajian telah diproses uh, menggunakan uh, SPSS versi 25. Uh, dan uh, soalan uh, soal selidik kami menggunakan skala likat mata lima. Okey, uh, ini adalah kerangka instrumen bagi soalan bagi kajian kami. Okey, uh, berikut saya paparkan berkenaan dengan dapatan demografi yang melibatkan uh, jantina, umur, tempo pengalaman mengajar dan juga kelulusan akademik tertinggi. Uh, seterusnya saya terus kepada dapatan kajian yang pertama Yang mana uh, adakah wujud hubungan antara pelaksanaan KPP dengan kefahaman guru tentang KPP uh, Jadi keputusan kajian menunjukkan uh, hubungan Terdapat hubungan yang positif dan sederhana serta signifikan Antara pelaksanaan KPP di sekolah dengan kefahaman guru tentang KPP Okey, dapatan kajian menunjukkan 0589 uh, hubungan di antara uh, ke, kefahaman guru dan juga pelaksanaan KPP di sekolah. Okay, seterusnya bagi menjawab soalan kajian yang kedua iaitu adakah wujud hubungan antara pelaksanaan KPP dengan kesediaan guru uh, dengan kesediaan guru tentang pelaksanaan KPP? Okey. 
Terdapat hubungan yang positif yang kuat serta signifikan antara pelaksanaan KPP dengan kesediaan guru iaitu nilainya 0.713. Saya teruskan kepada dapatan kajian yang ketiga untuk uh, menjawab hipotesis uh, adakah hipotesis tidak wujud pengaruh yang signifikan kefahaman guru dalam pelaksanaan KPP guru-guru sifat di sekolah. Okey, bagi, uh, bagi dapatan, dapatan bagi kajian ini menunjukkan uh, terdapat pengaruh yang signifikan kefahaman guru dalam pelaksanaan KPP guru-guru sifat di sekolah. Okey, uh, kefahaman guru Tibet mempengaruhi amalan KPP di sekolah secara positif dengan menyumbang sebanyak 36.3% perubahan varian terhadap amalan KPP di sekolah. Dengan kata lain, Guru-guru TBED yang mempunyai kefahaman tentang KPP akan meningkatkan amalan KPP di sekolah. Seterusnya dapat, dapatan kajian uh, bagi soalan kajian yang keempat. Okey, um, saya pergi kepada uh, dapatan. Secara rumusannya terdapat pengaruh yang signifikan kesediaan guru dalam pelaksanaan KPP guru-guru TBED di sekolah. Ini menunjukkan Kesediaan guru TVEC mempengaruhi amalan KPP di sekolah secara positif dengan uh, menyumbang 36.3% perubahan varian terhadap amalan KPP di sekolah. Ini menunjukkan semakin guru-guru TVEC itu mempunyai kesediaan terhadap uh, tentang KPP, ianya akan meningkatkan amalan KPP di sekolah. Okay. Jadi secara keseluruhan, dapatan kajian mendapati Terdapat hubungan antara kefahaman guru dan kesediaan guru dengan amalan KPP. Kajian juga menunjukkan kefahaman dan kesediaan guru TVET mempengaruhi amalan KPP di sekolah secara positif dengan menyumbang peratus perubahan varian terhadap amalan KPP di sekolah. Ini menunjukkan guru-guru TVET yang mempunyai kefahaman dan kesediaan tentang KPP akan meningkatkan amalan KPP di sekolah mereka. Secara keseluruhan, Guru bidang TVET telah melaksanakan KPP dengan baik. Okey, ini disokong oleh Pop dan Pop dan Goldman 2016 yang menunjukkan kepentingan pembinaan pengetahuan dalam diri guru tentang KPP telah menghasilkan satu situasi pembelajaran yang produktif. Selain itu, Vesio et al. 2008 juga menyatakan KPP merupakan satu model yang terhasil dalam menyokong perubahan paradigma pendidikan bagi memberi ruang untuk membangunkan profesionalisme guru. Namun begitu, um, okay. saya teruskan kepada uh, pendapat. Eh. Uh, pihak pemegang taruh seperti KPM, bahagian pendidikan dan latihan TVET, unit TVET JPN perlu bekerjasama dengan pemimpin guru dan guru-guru TVET di sekolah bagi membangunkan tahap kesediaan guru dan kefahaman guru berkaitan bidang TVET berkaitan KPP, amalan KPP di sekolah. Sebagai kesimpulannya, kajian tentang KPP yang mensasarkan kumpulan fokus iaitu guru bidang TVET merupakan satu sumbangan baharu dalam pendidikan yang mengkhususkan aspek kesediaan guru-guru bidang TVET. Fokus utama KPP adalah untuk meningkatkan kualiti PDPC guru yang dikhususkan dalam kajian ini iaitu guru-guru TVET yang menjadi salah satu cabang bidang STEM. Uh, selanjutnya, sebagai kajian lanjut, uh, kami mencadangkan diadakan uh, kajian berkenaan dengan pengaruh kesediaan uh, berkenaan dengan pengaruh kesediaan guru dalam melaksanakan KPP ke arah memantapkan autonomi guru dan kepimpinan guru seiring dengan transformasi pendidikan negara agar setanding dengan negara-negara maju di peringkat di peringkat global. Implikasi pelaksanaan KPP dalam bidang pendidikan adalah sangat besar dan mampu membawa hala tuju pendidikan selari dengan aspirasi CPPM. Di akhir sekali saya kongsikan satu quote. Uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Okay. Um, jadi uh, sekiranya sebuah sekolah itu melakukan uh, menjalankan amalan KPP di sekolah, itu menunjukkan uh, they would go far together. Okay, itu saja pembacaan saya. Uh, sekian, terima kasih. Okay, thank you, Puan Nur Arifa. So, we open Q&A session. Alright. 
with participants, if attendee or presenter have any question, they just uh, click the button, and then the host will put you in queue. Okay, any question? Soalan? Okay, so if no questions, so thank you very much for Nur Arifa for your presentation. Okay, before that, I would like to remind to all presenters and attendees, please fill in your attendance form okay, by click the link in the chat box. So next, we would like to invite uh, Puan Wan Nur Aini binti Wan Muhammad Noor from Sekolah Menengah Agama Khairiah Terengganu. Welcome. Okay. <coughs> okay, Assalamualaikum and Salam Sejahtera. Me, Wan Naraini binti Wan Muhammad Noor. Uh, the, I have record, wait for the video. Okay, thank you. Ya. 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 Alright. Okay. Today I will present uh, about navigating STEM through in engineering design process, student learning experience. Me, one already you can see what you know, and my uh, from SMA Korea, and my partner Nurul Najmi Muhammad Yusof from SMK Seri Budiman Kuala Terengganu. Okay, uh, our objective in this project uh, to assess the learning experience of Form 2 students from SMK Sri Budiman and SMA Khairia in Terengganu who use the world of obesity model or, or, or prototype to integrate STEM discipline through three subjects, science, ASK, RPT, in an engineering design process, EDP. Okay, we use three subjects, which, is, uh, which are science, ASK, and RPT. Science uh, from subtopic 3.2, a balanced diet, Student uh, need to uh, estimate the calorie uh, of uh, balance, uh, the calorie of food that they will take, and they plan a plate of uh, balanced diet in their uh, daily life. Okay, uh, in this subject, uh, they as, uh, justify the importance of balanced diet. While in a, in, a, in subject ASK uh, from chapter three point two, uh, struktur kut arahan, uh, in this uh, subtopic. Okay, uh, student, uh, we uh, build an application which they can count the body mass index, BMI, and then they delete the BMI that they use in the, uh, cal uh, they calculate in the application to the balanced diet which they have learned uh, in science. Okay, uh, besides in RPT, uh, they, in subtopic 2.6, uh, food design, uh, they evaluate the design of uh, food that they will make uh, uh, we may uh, we uh, ask the student to make a plate of sandwich and then they design the food and then they relate what they have learned in science about the calorie uh, they count the calorie use the application and then they also know the bmi from the application they made in an okay through this subject they integrate the stem uh, activity okay Okay, good. so we go to the next slide, is what is integrated STEM? Okay, integrated STEM means application and integration of engineering practices with the content and practice of science and mathematical to design technologies that solve real-world problems through collaboration and communication. This is from uh, Lei and Tanisa uh, Osman. Okay, uh, uh, it is about uh, the application of engineering practice that uh, use uh, science and mathematical to design technologies to solve uh, real-world problems through collaboration and communication. Okay, why is STEM? Okay, according to Holland, uh, 2015, okay, uh, S is uh, the idea or science uh, is the idea about the natural world as tolerated by empirical evidence. They have been accumulated over time and processed by which this idea has been generated. Technology T, the systems, processes, and artifacts uh, produced by human beings to serve their needs and desire. E, engineering, is the systematic and iterative process involved by scientific knowledge of designing objects and systems to achieve solution to human problems. While the last one is M, mathematics, is a systematic study of patterns, relationship among quantities, numbers, and space, 
express the symbol of the vehicle in the form of numer num numerals and forms uh, and uh, through logical argument. Okay. Uh, in this uh, project, we stress on E and T, uh, which is engineering and technology. We use the term engineering in a very broad sense to mean any engagement in a systematic practice of design to achieve solution to particular human problems. While technology, uh, we broadly use the term techno technology to include all types of human-made systems and processes, okay? not in the limited sense, uh, often used in schools that uh, equate uh, technology with modern computational and communication device. All right. Okay. Technologies result uh, when engineers apply their understanding of natural world and of human behavior to design way to satisfy human needs and wants. This is according to National Research Council 2012. All right. Okay. Uh, we use the this model, uh, which is from Gensi and more 2013, STEM translation model, which is the integrate integrate of of science, engineer uh, technologies. Uh, Engineering and mathematics. All these four are uh, integrate each other. All right. Okay. This is what is STEM education today. All right. Uh, science is about the study of natural world, while technologies is uh, any product created that was used to solve a problem is technology. While E, engineering, the design process used to solve problems, and maths is uh, the language of number, shapes, and quantities. Okay. According to these four, uh, uh, STEM is integrated each other. This is important to our uh, STEM education today. It's a movement to develop STEM fundamentals that students would need to, in order to competitive in 21st century. All right, it's very important for students' fundamentals. All right, okay, we use EDP. EDP, what processes were involved in EDP? Okay, uh, this is the, the circle of engineering process project, the process, uh, which is uh, in, uh, include six steps. Okay, first step is us. Okay, students need to identify the need and the constants. And then the next step, uh, students uh, need to research the problem. The third step is imaging. Imaging, students will have to imagine and develop the possible solution to their problems. Okay, in this situation, is uh, in this our project situation is a, a war of obesity. So they have to develop possible solution or possible uh, 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 solution into answer, answer their uh, war of obesity. And then the fourth step is uh, plan. They select a promising so uh, solution. They have to plan the step to build their prototype. And then the uh, first step is the fifth step is create. Uh, here, the students need to build a prototype. Okay, uh, their prototype to show uh, what have they uh, uh, they need to uh, solve uh, to possible solution they need to build. Right? <laughs> and then the sixth step is test and evaluate the prototype. They test their prototype or model that they uh, they, they make, and then they evaluate. And the last uh, step is improve. They here they improve the prototype, which is they redesign or they uh, calculate the number to make uh, the uh, the model or the calculation. Okay, uh, to then they, they redesign to make the best solution for the uh, problems. All right, this is the circle that my students uh, use uh, uh, for their project. Right, okay. The, uh, according to National Research Council, uh, 2012, okay, and as NGSS lead states uh, have identified three main points uh, that show, should be present in engineering design. First, they define and set boundaries of engineering problem. Here, clearly state the problems that need to be solved in terms of criteria of success and constraints or boundaries. Second, develop possible solution. Okay, this is generate possible solution followed by evaluating the solution to determine the best option that meets the criteria and constraints of problem. Okay, the last point is uh, optimizing solution. They optimize the solution. Solution are systematically test and refined through a trade-off process where the final solution is improved by considering various criteria and deciding to accept less important under undesirable uh, criteria in order to have other more important criteria based on user situation and needs. Right. Okay, this is uh, what uh, I quote from uh, uh, Amalan Science and Kajutraan BPK 2016 and National Research Council. Uh, the practices are what students do to make science of phenomena. Okay, uh, the practice is uh, according to science and engineering practices. Okay, they are both a set of skills and a set of knowledge to internet internet lives. Okay, the SEPs uh, reflect the major practices that scientists and engineering's uh, engineers use to investigate investigate the world and design and build system. All right. This is the uh, the findings that we get from students' learning experience uh, through the three subject and the true prototype uh, they had uh, built to solve the problem from the three subjects. Okay. 
first of all, uh, we can uh, see in uh, about the social inter interaction, interaction or uh, we can say it's about communication, right? Okay, uh, social interaction helps uh, attention span and develop reasoning skills. Okay, students can generate their own idea and critics in group discussion. Okay, it develops agency ownership and engagement with students learning. Okay, uh, second, we can uh, see about uh, exploration, exploration from the students. This allows students to investigate, design, imagine, and explore. Okay, therefore, developing curiosity, resilience, and optimism. All right, students uh, brainstorm and explore the ideas of BMI skills as, uh, application and a plate of meal that they want to produce based on the subjects, uh, science, RBT, and SK knowledge they have learned. Okay, and then they build the prototype. Exploration. Um, occur when they build the uh, prototype. Okay. The third uh, findings that we can get is generate, uh, students can generate new ideas. Okay. This able students generate their new ideas or in, in innovation and develop creativity among them. In addition, this project provides opportunity for students to reflect on existing knowledge or ideas and subsequently restructure the ideas. Okay. The fourth four findings is uh, designing a solution. Students can designing a solution to solve their problem. Okay, this allows students determining desired uh, solution, limitation, and criteria, developing design process, design plan, producing and testing models or prototypes, selecting alternative designs to optimize design criteria, and perfecting design idea based on prototype testing or simulation that they have uh, built. Okay, the five findings we can look at on argumentation and reasoning from the students. Okay, this creates a safe and supporting environment among students. Students can discuss and debate uh, among them, and it promotes uh, engagement in scientific discussion and improves learning of scientific concepts of the students. Okay, students can generate questions, formulate a position, and make their discussion uh, uh, along the uh, along the. Uh, time they make the prototype, okay, and then also in the subject. Okay, the last one, uh, the last finding that we can see is positive attitude to failure. Okay, student uh, show their positive attitude. Eh? Okay, uh, the iterative and uh, evaluative nature of many system problems mean failure is an important part. Uh, of the problem solving process, a healthy attitude that shown by the student to fellow encourage reflection, resilience, and continual improvement among the students. All right, we get we can see from the findings we get six uh, findings that show uh, the students' learning experience. All right, and uh, this is uh, uh, the prototype or the model they use, they are they build uh, uh, through the three subject in the science. Uh, they learn about calorie. Uh, they use um, they have to make uh, a model of pyramid. Okay, pyramid, and then they can count, they can uh, know about the balanced diet. Okay, why in ASK? Okay, uh, they use the one uh, application to, to calculate their BMI and then they relate to the uh, balanced diet. They use a Python as such. Okay, and in subject RPT, they design a plate of sandwich uh, and then they calculate the calorie of the sandwich, the, the food that they, they use, uh, and then calculate the calorie. And then they can uh, communicate by uh, in their group and then they discuss the best way to get the best balanced diet from the sandwich. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, from the uh, project that uh, uh, we have made, uh, we can uh, show about the effect of integrated, integrated STEM education on science students' uh, learning experience. Okay, first, uh, uh, integrated STEM uh, can give positive effect on students' learning, especially increasing and improving student interest and in learning in STEM. Okay, besides, teaching STEM disciplines through integrating them would be more in line with the nature of STEM. Okay, the nature of the work, the work of most STEM professionals blurs uh, the line between discipline. This integrated STEM education can make learning more relevant and meaningful for students. Meaningful learning also occurs when learners make connection between their prior knowledge and new experiences and skills within their real, their real world context. Okay, it can improve students' attitude towards STEM subject, improve their higher level thinking skills, and also increase achievement in their achievement uh, in STEM subject. STEM learning experience also prepare students uh, for the global economy in 21st century. Mm -hmm. Students state that uh, lesson content that they perceive as personally meaningful and interesting are topics that were important in or related to their daily life. Okay, the form of activities through which learning took place also played an important role in influencing student in, uh, interests. All right. 
for the conclusion, the result of the survey that uh, we use uh, for students shows statically significant improvement in STEM. Okay, in STEM knowledge, in STEM skills, attitudes, and practices. Students will make aware of their potential as problem solver, thinkers, producers, and collaborators. Students are expected to be actively involved in STEM interdisciplinary activities that across uh, curiosity and enable them to ask questions, collaborate, collaborate, design, construct, investigate, and com uh, communicate about the result or solutions obtained and method used. Additionally, additionally, this activity uh, from STEM interdisciplinary is expected to foster 21st century skills among the students. Okay, that's all from me. Uh, thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you for uh, Noraini. So right. we open to every session from the attendee or the presenter. Okay. Any question from presenter or attendee? Uh, saya nak betulkan sikit. Tadi saya ada sal saya silap sikit. Saya sebut enam step dalam EDT. Actually ada tujuh eh. Uh, kalau tengok circle tu ada tujuh. Saya betulkan. Okay, thank you. So, if any question, just clicking the button and then the button and then the host will put you in queue. So, kita buka soalan lagi. From Faizal to everyone, Tanya Kek Gunuraini. Thank you. First time join IC time. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> It's good for you sebenarnya, you can share. Yeah. Many experience from best, all best. the presenter, kan? Mm. Okay, if no questions, thank you so much. For all right, thank you. Like. So, we will proceed to the next presenter. We would like to invite Puan Nurul Zuraini binti Nuzul Kifli from from Nengah Kebangsaan Datuk Haji Abdul Wahab, Perak. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening. Uh, sorry, good afternoon to everyone. Okay, I'm Cik Gunur Rozraini binti Zulkifli from SMK Dato' Haji Abdul Wahab. Uh, uh, I and my friend, my colleagues, uh, Cik Gunur Riza Awang, uh, Cik Guru Cemerlang from SMK Anderson and Miss Maisara Sofia, from a uh, graduate student from the UMT, have conducted a research and innovation entitled Experilab and interactive apps to conduct experiment during the pandemic. So my presentation will be uh, from the video. You can watch the video now. Okay. When the PPR is start on January, my students face problems that they cannot do an experiment based on their syllabus. I asked them to watch the video from the YouTube and read the steps of the experiment from textbook. But they find it very difficult to understand and quite boring. So from that situation, here comes an idea to make Experilex, an experiment application from I, Nurul Zuraini, and my friends, Nuriza Awang, and my Sarah Sofia. This research is to build an experiment application to help students understand the experiment step by step and to study the effectiveness of the application to student understanding in doing an experiment. The application also provides a quiz on how to make the experiment report. How this idea come out? Here is the research background. Because of the COVID-19 breakout through the world, it has changed the implementation of teaching and learning progress process in education system. In order to control the pandemic from becomes worse, Movement Control Order, or MCO, is enforced, including Malaysia. Students have to learn from their home. For subject in science, especially chemistry in secondary school, they need to do a practical or experiment. 
Learning experiment through video or textbook is quite boring. We acknowledge our Form 5 students in SMK Anderson and SMK Datuk Haji Abdul Wahab facing a huge problem by just gaining the content from book. Almost all of our students spend 16 hours of their time with smartphone. So, we have done a survey to know what really they need in order to learn an experiment and gain optimal knowledge. Hence, the research objectives are to help Form 5 students of Form 5 STEM at SMK Anderson and SMK Datuk Haji Abdul Wahab understand better the step of doing an experiment. Secondly, to help the student explore on their own the steps from the beginning how to conduct the experiment. And lastly, the objective is to enhance the, student, the science process skill of the students. Based on the literature review that is reported by Fletcher on 2003, it is said that in United Kingdom, the students fully support the use of smartphone and mobile application in learning. So we apply quantitative research method in our research design. We use survey research technique. Our research participants are science stream students of Form 5 from SMK Anderson and SMK Dato Haji Abdul Wahab and also from the result of the pre-test and post-test of SCN base. Puan Nurul, I will continue about the findings and results we got in our studies. Let's look at the graph obtained. The first graph shows 19 out of 43 students don't like to do experiment at home at all. We think this is something dangerous because they will also go through the practical examination in SPM letter. How can we help them? We plan to have something to do with this. Students are representing the community of three schools. We shared 44% of them choose not to do the experiment at home. Let's take a look on the second results. Second Mentimeter shows that 85% of 54 students choose to learn experiment through apps. We don't want to kill their skills by burdening them. Other than that, we have also made a pre and post test of using these apps. Look at what's in the test data. Before using the apps, more students achieve less than 10 marks, while the post test showed more students achieve more than 10 marks after using the apps. It shows the magic of using apps, right? Let me bring you to the world of our apps. This feature app shows three subjects. However, we only have time to fill in with chemistry subjects. So provide forum space for users to interact virtually so we can interact at any time, anywhere. Learning videos provided by innovators also include in these apps. It will help the students to discover easily and quickly. Still many deficiencies in these apps, such as apps cannot cover all topics, only consist chemistry for time being, and lack of quiz. There are no weaknesses that cannot be overcome with innovation. We suggested to add more experiment in the apps, overcome with the innovation, add up physics and biology, also included more quiz in the app. We must run the learning process by using digital and technology as I believe there is an expression from Ali bin Abi Talib 
that is quite fundamental about the education of the children. Teach your children according to their time because they live in their time and not your time. Indeed, they were created for their time while you created for your time. That's all. Thank you. That's all. Yeah, that's all. Uh, <clears throat> Puan Akida, uh, yeah. is there uh, time for me? Is there, is there still time for me to explain about my app? Yeah. Okay, yeah, let sure. me share you. Okay, uh, about my apps. Okay, about our apps. Okay. So we have one question: How the students to do? So how the student do the experiment through this application? Okay. <clears throat> right. Actually, the student, uh, the material and apparatus, uh, they cannot get from the from home. Okay. So there are certain material, uh, and apparatus for the certain experiment they can provide it, uh, from the home, but. Uh, for the most of the experiment, they cannot do uh, at home just watching by the from the video. Okay, so normally teacher will provide the, the YouTube video. Okay, so student just watch the video. Okay, so this app just uh, bring them uh, just by watching the video. They can go from the apps uh, uh, to to. To uh, up need to uh, to assess the the experiment, okay, step by step, just not by by reading from the textbook or just watching the video. They can uh, uh need, go step by step uh, for the for the experiment, but the material and apparatus itself they cannot do at home. Just for the certain experiment uh, that they can uh, provide it. For for I say, if uh, the beaker they can replace with the pot from the from the uh, home, so they can do the experiment. But for the experiment that the material and apparatus that uh, that cannot get from the home, so they just can watch and assess the as uh, the apps just by by uh, assess the step of the experiment. I hope you can answer the question. Okay. One Rosani, just now you said you want to uh, explain a little bit about your apps. Ah, yeah. Okay, wait. Okay. Eh? For sure, you can still have another two minutes. Okay, I have another two minutes. I don't know if I can share it here. Okay, can you see the? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay, so this is about uh, my apps. It cannot move. Cannot go to the <laughs> next slide. Cannot go. Oh. Uh, when Noriza is, is it here? I cannot, I cannot move the slide. When Zurayn is, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you want us to play the video right now? Boleh uh, nampak tak? Tak apalah, kita ni je lah. Okay, our apps, 
uh, our apps con uh, contain uh, four, actually three subjects, biology, physics, and chemistry. But for time being, uh, we just do for chemistry because uh, actually we are we both are chemistry teacher. Okay, then uh, our apps for the second surface is the procedure of step by steps of the experiment. Uh, just now, Puan Anis asked about the how this how the students do the experiment through these apps. Actually, we have a continuous for this. Um, uh, this project, okay, uh, we have one more uh, uh, excitement uh, with this uh, IC STEM also. Uh, in room one tomorrow, uh, we are going to present our chemi kicks, which is uh, the procedure we bring here, but uh, the kicks we bring in chemi kicks. Okay, uh, the second one is the inside the chemistry in the uh, because th uh, that one cannot be. I show here, okay. Uh, the uh, inside the chemistry, uh, sorry, inside the experiment, uh, the student will learn uh, with infographic uh, all the process, uh, all the uh, we, what we say KPS, uh, kemahiran process science, and also um, the detail of the experiment. Okay, the detail of the experiment. Oh, now can see. Okay, now you can see. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, so this is uh, you can you can um, install the apps from the Android app. Eh? So our apps are already uh, in the Android Android system, but still not in iOS system. So you can install Asperi Lab here, and then yeah, can you see the slide? Okay, this is just the one the dashboard that uh, Puan Oriza just mentioned. Our apps uh, have. Three subjects: biology, chemistry, and physics. But for the time being, we just uh build up for the chemistry, okay, because of the of the time constraint. And also from the apps, the features of the apps also uh, included YouTube video, okay, about the teaching video, okay. And uh, from the chemistry, if you click from the chemistry, there are the experiment, okay. The experiment show you the step of the experiment. And then inside the experiment, show you about the experiment itself uh, from the hypothesis, the notes, okay, and all the important point of the experiment. And also there is a forum, forum uh, you can check with the, uh, with the teachers, okay. And okay, this is about the experiment, the features of the experiment, okay. This is how the step of the experiment is shown, okay. Okay, this is the, the topic about acid and base from form 4 chemistry. Okay, this is uh, inside the experiment. It is explained about the experiment. Okay, the hypothesis, the uh, science process skill and all. Okay, so the student can get there. Okay, and here is the YouTube uh, video of the uh, PDP. Currently, we just put the teaching video from me and uh, Point Noriza. Okay. So from the time to time, we, we will build up uh, these apps and we will co collaborate the apps with the physics teachers and also the biology teachers because in this app, we also have uh, features, uh, chemistry, biology and physics. Okay. So I think that's all. Okay. So any questions from attendees? Or presenter? Okay. If no, we proceed to the last presenter. We would like to invite Juan Zakia Binti Setu from S. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. So the uh, my video will be played by the uh, host. Thank you.
wait for a moment when Zakia we have some technical issue. Okay, before that, I would like to announce that your presentation will take about 15 minutes. 12 minutes is allocated for presentation, and another 3 minutes for Q&A session. And I would like to remind to all attendees and other participants, please fill in your attendance form by click the link in the chat box. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good day to all presenters and participants of the third international conference in STEM 2021. I am Zakia Binti Setu, registered to this conference as a teacher at SMK Agama Tun Ahmad Zaidi Kuching, Sarawak, but now I am a lecturer at IPG Campus Tun Abdul Razak, Kota Samarahan, Sarawak. Today, I would like to present my paper written with my supervisor, Muhammad Tramizi Borhan, Gamification and Game-Based Learning in Science Education in Secondary School of Malaysia, a Systematic Literature Review. I will start with introduction and background of the study. This study is to review previ previous published articles on gamification and game-based learning in science education in secondary school in Malaysia. In an educational setting, gamification is the use of game design elements commonly found in digital games such as rewards, point system, badges, levels, challenges, and leaderboards to enter the learning process. Rukaya 2014 defines gamification from an educational perspective as a platform that aims to integrate elements such as motivation, feedback, and appreciation from students. At the same time, Simons et al. 2015 concludes that gamification is a new trend that aims to increase student interest, participation, motivation, and royalty. Game-based learning refers to the use of video games and elements related to the reality, contain themes and images of the game in the educational process. On the other hand, Mr. and Jacob define GBL as a game with defined learning outcomes and with ideas for students to play to achieve learning goals. Today, the use of digital games for Game-based learning in the classroom is quite common. Nor Fasliyah Muhammad et al. 2018, some of the benefits of using GBL include the use of self-directed learning, promote students to become problem solver, and promoting game design. It is also to encourage new practice and promote healthy competition among students. In Malaysia Education Blueprint 2013-2025, it is stated that one of the problems that arises in the education system through the aspiration of the students is the lack of interest of the students in science. This problem is illustrated by a decrease in the percentage of students enrolled in science courses at upper secondary level. By 2020, only 90% of students enrolled in the science stream. Thus, Malaysia Education Blueprint 2013 to 2025 propose the effort to increase student interest through a new learning approach and one of it is gamification. The purpose of this study is to review previous published articles in Scopus and MySight database on gamification and game-based learning in science education in secondary school in Malaysia. This study will help researchers in obtaining information about the implementation of gamification and GBL in science education. It will answer these three research questions. 
First, what is the distribution of gamification and GBL empirical research articles in secondary school science education in Malaysia in Scopus and MySite Index databases? Number two, what is the effect of gamification and GBL in secondary school science education in Malaysia? And number three, what are the comparisons of gamification and GBL implementation in science education in Malaysia? The methodology of this research, this research is a systematic review to the selected articles retrieved from Scopus and my site. The databases were assessed via a Malaysia public university University Pendidikan Sultan Idris. Three themes specified in RQ1 to RQ3 limit the content analysis of the articles. Using these two databases specifically to answer all the research questions in this paper by utilizing systematic and complete article searching procedure and analysis. The database resource, this study utilized two index database. The first one is Corpus which is produced by reputable Elsevier Cole and index over 24,000 active title and is thereby the largest curated peer-reviewed abstract and indexing database available to academic government and corporate institution. The second database is the MySite, a database which provides access to bibliographic and full-text contents of scholarly journal published in Malaysia. It is chosen as well because Malaysia is one of the inclusion criteria determined earlier of the research. Then the PRISMA procedure is used to filter the titles and abstract of articles from the databases. The inclusion and exclusion process according to the criteria is shown in the table. The article must be between 2013 to 2021 secondary school from Malaysia, either written in English or Malay, and the search string generated shown in the next table. The selection process is shown in, the, in this figure. Firstly, the process started uh, started with identifying, searching and listing the synonyms for the main keywords to get as many as possible articles from the databases. Consequently, 285 documents retrieved from Scopus and 187 from my site. Secondly, the articles will undergo the screening process. The articles are included or excluded based on the criteria determined uh, earlier. At this stage, researcher excluded all the articles that are not empirical research, such as books, chapters in book, and review articles. After this process, 111 articles are excluded from Scopus and 7 from my site. Then, from the remaining 174 articles from Scopus, 144 are excluded due to not in science education, as well as 176 out of 180 articles from my site. Eventually, 20 articles from Scopus and 4 articles from my site were examined by reading through the titles, abstract, method, result, and discussion to ensure they are eligible for the inclusion criteria and aligned to answer the research question of this paper. It follows that only 5 articles left and met the specification to be analyze findings and discussion now findings result and discussion for research question one obviously the distribution of gamification and gbl empirical research articles in secondary school science education in malaysia in scopus and my site index database are very low that five articles are listed in the table below. These are the five articles. The limited number of articles is contra with what is stated by De Seva et al. 2015 and Nedegat 2016. They said the implementation of gamification in science education has increased significantly. Indeed, Ong et al. 2013 stated that the practice of gamification and GBL is still new in Malaysia, but after almost a decade, research on the implementation of gamification or GBL 
in science education in secondary school in Malaysia is still scarce in the Scopus and MySight Index database. For research question number two, to study the effect of gamification and GBL, these studies showed positive effects in the implementation of gamification and GBL in accordance with the resp respective research questions for every study. The next table describes the positive impact studied by the researcher. From the results, we can discuss that the use of gamification and game-based learning give positive impacts in teaching and learning process in science education. Previous research reported that when digital games is used in learning process, it can improve the student's achievement from Huang et al. 2014 and also their motivation as real 2014. Digital game-based learning also proven to increase students' creativity, found that when playing digital games, players have to make analysis, synthesis, and thinking critically to achieve game goals and game planning. Thus, it can intensify critical thinking and increase the level of problem-solving skills. However, a game that gives an impact to a group of students does not necessarily give the same impact to another group of students. Becker, 2016. Therefore, the author would like to suggest more studies to develop digital game-based learning were built by educators in Malaysia for two reasons taken from previous studies. Namely, first, game-based learning has succeeded in providing a positive impact from various aspects. And secondly, self-construction by local educators will ensure that the positive effects actually experienced by their students. This suggestion is due to what is emphasized by the Malaysia Education Blueprint, raising student outcome in and interest in STEM education through new learning approaches, including ICT games based instructional material. Now, for the research question number three, to compare the gamification and GBL implementation in science education in Malaysia, two main categories were analyzed. Firstly, the team used in the research to explain the learning process, and secondly, how the learning process has been done. The next table shows the result for these two categories. From the results obtained, despite of the significant increased implementation of gamification in science education, none of the paper used the term gamification at all. According to Nista and Jacob 2018, the term gamification first appeared online in 2008. Nick Pelling claims to be the first who created the term gamification in 2002. He used it to describe the application of computer game design elements to electronic device for the purpose of making them more applicable. Even though Figura Flores 2016 clearly distinguished these two terms, but Turner 2017 said the borderline between game-based learning, serious games, and gamification are unavoidably indistinct. No number of definition can remove this ambiguity or prevent people from using these terms in ways that we believe are inappropriate. That's all. In conclusion, this study successfully responded to the three raised research questions. The number of empirical studies related to gamification and GBL needs to be increased. Then, the study analysis showed positive impact on the learning process that applied this approach. These positive effects include student motivation, interest, and achievement, eventually efforts to compare and contrast how gamification and GBL has been done, have revealed that in most studies, it is not clearly differentiated. The researchers suggest in the future studies to clearly distinguish the types of approaches chosen, either gamification 
or game-based learning, or both, for the development of materials to be used in science education. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Wan Zakia. So, as you can see, we have one question from Checkbox from Anish Diana. What is the difference between gamification and game-based learning? Thank you, uh, Puan Anis, for the question. Okay, basically, we, are, we find it very hard to, difference, uh, to differentiate between gamification and game-based learning. Uh, in most uh, previous research, uh, the researcher uh, do not bother to differentiate between these two terms. But when we come to a uh, uh, decision to build up, uh, a, a content to teach students. So we have to decide either we want to do the gamification or is it game-based learning? But uh, for all, uh, for our information, it's actually very uh, little researcher uh, bother to differentiate between these two games. But actually I want to share the differentiation between these two terms, the gamification and the game-based learning. Uh, okay, uh, the gamification, we add the game inspired elements to our uh, learning process, such as rewards, point, uh, leaderboards. Uh, but in game based learning, we use game to meet learning outcome. That is the very obvious differentiation between these two uh, terms. In gamification, you may just uh, ask your student to answer the quizzes, but uh, you, you apply, okay, you apply the game. Uh, elements during that learning process. For example, you give them a question, who can answer the question uh, first will win the battle among the students. That is gamification. You don't have to build up any game base, any game like a uh, board game or digital game. Okay, that is gamification. We want, we want to gamify the learning process so people, uh, the, the students, the pupils will get more motivation, more interest to do the lesson, to do the learning process. But in game-based learning, we build a game, we play a game, and during that game, we use game to meet learning outcomes, like um, most uh, what we have nowadays. We have a lot of digital games, so that is uh, game-based learning. Example of gamification is a quizzes. Quizzes is one of the app that we always use. Uh, the kids are not playing. They are answering the question, but the game elements is included during when they answer the question. They can see the score, the score. they can see who lead and uh, they can uh, compete with their friends. That is gamification. But in game-based learning, we build a game and they play the game. While they play the game, they will reach the learning outcomes. Okay, that is the most obvious, uh, obvious uh, differentiation between gamification and game based learning. Okay, thank you, Jago. Very good explanation. Okay, any token? Any question from the uh, attendees or the presenters? Question from the attendee or presenter. So, thank you, Puan Zakia. So, the presentation is ended. Okay, so for your information, all the finish already, all the presentation at this afternoon. Okay, we will take a break until 2 p.m. But before that, if you don't mind, please open the camera. We're going to take a, a photography session at this afternoon. Please, all the presenter and also the attendees, open the camera, please. Thank you. Okay, all the presenter and attendees. Okay. So don't forget, we still have another three presenter. And they will start at 3, up to 3.45. Okay, please open the camera. Not all open the camera at once again. Open the camera, please. Before we take a break, we're going to take a photo.
Okay. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay, thank you. So we take a break up to 2 p.m. And then please join us at 2 p.m. Because we have a plenary one session. And then we continue at 3 p.m. with our Sila Studente. Okay. Okay, after uh, sorry, uh, after 2 p.m. we have to uh, stay in this room again. Uh, hmm? Ballroom. Ballroom or this room? After this. Wanna ni? Nanti stay yeah. dekat uh, ballroom. Ballroom eh? Okay. Uh, so and then pukul 3 masuk balik dalam room 6. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Alright, welcome. Okay, thank you everyone.